what happened to Antonio Brown? Did he quit? I've never seen a guy leave a field like that. And is this the last strike for him? He is no longer a buck. All right, that's the end of the story. Let's talk about the guys that went out there and won the game. But it's not the end of the story because the story is kind of confusing, kind of interesting, kind of wild. You're probably sick of hearing about it because it's the most talked about story in sports right now. But I got a lot of requests, so I tried to piece together all the rumors and all the all the other stuff at the end. But anyway, if you have no idea what's going on, after this handoff from Brady, the Bucks are losing to the Jets, handoff to Bell. They gain a couple yards. On the sideline, Antonio Brown is upset about something, and he's saying, screw this, I'm out of here. He's taking the pads off. Evans is trying to talk him out of it, being like, no, come on, dude, it's all good. He's like, nope, taking my pads off, I'm leaving. But, okay, a little bit of difficulty. Yeah, don't film me right now. Okay, got him, got him, good. Here. Take those. I'm out of here. Meanwhile, Brady and his teammates are running a play. He looks at the field. He's like, I'll stay on the sidelines, I guess. They're going to run their second and eight play. I'm going to show off my abs. I don't want this shirt either. Someone probably wants it. Here, you guys take it. The glove, I don't want that either. Meanwhile, snap, Brady throws it over, and they're going to get stopped. They lose yards. And you can see he kind of looks over, let's see, right there. He looks over. He sees the plays winding down. He's like, all right, I can go on the field now. Whistle's blown dead on the field. No one really cared that he was throwing the shirt or anything. And now he's on the end zone, and the fans are kind of figuring it out. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it is me. What up? Peace. See you guys later. Thanks for coming out tonight. Love you. Broadcast picks it up. They're like, we're, they were told that's Antonio Brown. We don't really know what's going on. Meanwhile, Evans, the dude that was trying to stop him, now he's in the huddle for the next play. I wonder if he was like, you guys got to believe me what just happened. It was wild. But he catches the pass. He gets the first down. They continue to drive. Little creation of Adam moment happening there. Cute moment between him and the defender. And they just keep driving. They're going to hand it off. Psych, fake out, pass. That's a catch. And then the Bucks are going to keep going, and Brady's going to do his thing, and that's a touchdown. Bucks are coming back. Big old spike in the end zone. Jets coach is like, what the hell was all of that about? Brown's a lefty, which surprised a lot of us. You don't really think about receivers and if they're lefties or righties and if that comes into play or not. But, yeah, he's a lefty. Imagine if he's not a lefty and he just throws shirts only lefty or something like that. I don't know. Meanwhile, Antonio Brown, he's got, you know, kind of a long record of doing wild and interesting and bizarre stuff. So it didn't come as a lot of surprise. But then you find out that he had a lot of incentives. Eight more catches to unlock 333 grand, 55 more receiving yards to unlock another, one receiving touchdown to unlock another. He was going to get a million dollars if he just played the rest of this game and next week as well. But he didn't. So people are like, is that why he was mad? Because they were intentionally not targeting him. So to cost him money because they're mad at him for all the other nonsense he's done. Or what was it? And then we get three different stories of why he left. Here's the first two from reporter Ian Rapport and coach Bruce Arians. Antonio Brown did not believe that he was healthy. He had been battling an ankle injury for the last several weeks. But he wouldn't go in the game because he was injured and now he's no longer part of the team. Can you, can you fire a player if he won't go because he's injured? I don't know that he was. Did he, did he say that he was, or was there a dispute about that? No. What he told the staff from what I understand is that he was not going into the game because in his mind, he did not feel he was healthy. He just refused to go in or can you tell us more about it? Not really. I mean, it ha- what happened is pretty obvious what happened. So, uh, you know, he left the field and that was it. The response then from the offensive coaches and from Bruce Arians was, if you are not going to go into the game, when we tell you to go into the game, then you cannot be here. At that point, they threw him off the sidelines and then cut him from the team. The conversation you had with, with Antonio Brown was, was not one regarding his ankle injury. No. So two completely different stories saying the exact opposite thing. One says it was because of injury. The other is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. He was injured. Uh, Not at all. And then the third story comes from Brown himself, who says, I knew the game was still going. I left because I'm super gremlin. So that's what really happened. I like the fact that he he has to clarify. I knew the game was still going because he thinks people... (laughs) 
he thinks that people think that he's that dumb that he didn't even know the game was going on. <laughs> he thinks that some people <laughs> thinking maybe he thought the game was over. <laughs> he was just leaving. So he had to clear that up. Like, no, I knew the game was still going on. And then what's really interesting is Ian Rapport goes on Pat McAfee's show later on and tries to tell him his story about the injury. And Pat kind of says, yeah, okay, cool, but no. But he didn't feel like it was good. and So they forced him to was, play? What's that? So they forced him to play? I, see, I don't, I don't think an NFL team forces anyone to. Yeah, play. you can't is what I'm trying to lead you to, Ian. Like, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't no, yeah, I don't know how that would happen. You know, that, that. Any, any, I mean, as you know, any return to play situation is basically an agreement between the player slash player agent, the coach, and the medical people. It's all three of them. So nobody forced him to do anything. All right, so let's go take a look. Naturally, I think you're going to want to go see him play beforehand and run routes and see if he looked injured at all, and we'll all put on our medical eyeballs and be like, oh, no, he looks healthy to me. Meanwhile, we don't know anything. But I don't know. He was, like, you know, running, running routes and running. So if I put on my medical, if I put on my medical eyeballs and I look at it, I'm like, I don't know. He looks healthy to me, but I don't know shit about diagnosing someone's ankles via game film. First time I've ever been tasked to do it, if we're being completely honest. No, he he looks fine. And then as the story goes, he just left. He got a ride, and then he immediately released a rap song, uh, Pit, Not the Palace. He is from the Pit, Not the Palace, I believe is a song. He says, thanks for the opportunity to the Bucks. Big mad, but mad doesn't mean anger or anything. It just means making a difference, big making a difference. And then he went to some basketball games in the city and hung out. So uh, I, we'll see what happens next if he gets picked up or anywhere. But, yeah, that's kind of the whole breakdown of the situation and the stories that came out of it after the fact. And no one really knows anything besides I don't think he's forced to play. 